What's up, guys? Game Fiend Funeral Games here, and I'm back. And it's Saturday, and it's time for another Drama Script of Saturdays. And let's start off with Raw. The way Raw started off was John Cena came out very upset that he lost to John Laronitis at No Way Out because Big Show interfered, which means John Laronitis is still the GM for both shows, blah, blah, blah. But the way John Laronitis is selling his injuries is funny as hell. After Cena was ranting and raving for like a good five minutes, John Laronitis comes out on a freaking electric electric wheelchair with with Eve and he has a a a, a, a clutch a cane I forgot what it's called a crutch sorry a crutch yeah yeah he came out with a crutch saying that his eight he, he has multiple injuries to his ACL and it was just it was just over over the line just overall funny it was very very funny I enjoyed it John Lyonitis is doing very, very good with uh, selling his, his injuries. And then Big Show came out, explains that last week he was on his knees crying and begging. And basically, he's saying that the fans didn't care. And he cut the best promo of his whole 18-year career. So right away, we get the first match that's scheduled for No Way Out is Big Show versus John Cena. And it's still cage match because spoiler, I think no way out's doing a new theme where all the the matches are going to be cage matches. Assuming hopefully they'll well, they're probably going to change that, but who knows? But anyway, the first match of the night was John Cena versus David Otunga. Obviously, a David Otunga loss, which makes David Otunga 0 and 4 or 0 and 5 against John Cena. And then Santino Morella had a funny angle with Ricardo Rodriguez. Which was I found I found it funny. Then it, then it, after that it was Roberto Del Rio versus Randy Orton, which I think I forgot how that ended. Now that I think about it. Oh, and then his qualification because Chris Jericho came out and decided to give Randy Orton the code breaker twice. And more on Jericho later on in the story. Then after that it was Kane versus Daniel Bryan. With, and then it was funny that match ended in disqualification because. CM Punk did commentary and I got very excited for that, but CM Punk tried to hit, take the chair and hit Kane with the chair as how Daniel Bryan took the chair and hit Kane with it on SmackDown. I got CM Punk disqualified, but that didn't work because Kane saw uh, Daniel Bryan stopped CM Punk from hitting Kane with the chair, but then when the fuss was over, Kane saw Daniel Bryan with the chair and then Kane just beat the holy hell out of him. And then after that, after C after Dan Bryan was laid on the ring, CM Punk went in the ring and put the Anaconda Vice on. Him. After that match was basically a, a squash match to help promote Christian, because yes, Christian is back. He came back. He came back at No Way Out, won a battle royal, and beat Cody Rhodes, and now he's the new Intercontinental Champion. A squash match between Junior Mahal and Christian, and Christian won. Then after that was Kelly Kelly versus Beth Phoenix, and. Let's just say Kelly Kelly had to get scooped off off the mat because Beth Phoenix beat the holy crap out of him. And the main event for Raw was John Cena and Sheamus versus Laura Tenside, Jack Swagger, and Dolph Ziggler, an alumni Jack match, which as you, as everything lost control because all the lumberjacks got into the ring, and then all the face. Basically, Raw ended with all the faces versus all the heels, and John Cena escaped to go look for Big Show. Bumps into John Laronitis, says, hey, where's Big Show? Big Show, uh, John Laronitis says, oh, he doesn't know. And as soon as he turns around, Big Show punches him right in the face with the weapons of max destruction. But the funny part about this was the, the sound effect that was added when Big Show punched Cena right in the temple. It sounded like a gunshot, which was very, very funny and entertaining. But all, all overall, I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed Raw. Moving on to, to Impact, and as you know, this, this week was Open Fight Night. The first match that I want to talk about was Gail Kim and Madison Rain defeated ODV and Eric Young in a non-title match. Uh, our Vibe Van Dam called out Gunner to probably reunite this feud that, that ended at Genesis because Gunner took Rob Van Dam out. Rob Van Dam beat Gunner <clears throat> with a five star frog splash, old school halfway across the ring. Uh, Devon and 
D excuse me, Devon and Garrick Derek Bischoff fought because Devon called out Garrick Bischoff and Robbie E and Robbie T interfered in the match, so it led in a no contest. Uh, Austin Aries defeated Joey Ryan to retain the X Division title with the Brain Buster. It was a very, very awesome match between Joey Ryan and, and Austin Aries, but I've, I've never seen a bad Austin Aries match to date. Bully Ray called out Joseph Park, who was, who was standing in the stands, which I'm really, really liking his, his funny character. Joseph Park tried to call uh, Bully Ray guilty for his appearance of uh, Abyss, but we're not going to... But it's, f it's funny that Park didn't mention that Abyss did show up two weeks ago, but what do you know? Joseph Park is Abyss. It's funny how some fans didn't know that. That was... It's, it's just funny. But moving on, the main event uh, was Bobby Roode versus AJ Styles. Yes, Hulk Hogan narrated it down throughout the, the whole night and finally picked AJ Styles. Overall, it was a great match, and Bobby Roode wound up winning clean, which means that Bobby Roode is now the longest TNA running, longest World Heavyweight Champion is Bobby Roode for the TNA Heavyweight title. He beats AJ Styles' record when he defends his title. And he won clean, which was which was surprising because that's one of the few matches that Roode has ever won clean. And then Roode celebrates by himself with the confetti. He calls Hulk Hogan out to come celebrate with him. Hulk Hogan takes a, a glass of wine. And then he announced that next week, Impact will be live. Next week will be May 31st. And the person, and then the lights. Come, he says, "Oh yeah." And then somebody's gonna come back, and the person that comes back is Sting. Yeah, Sting comes back. Just when you thought TNA was gonna stop pushing wrestlers over 40, Sting comes back. And the first match on TNA next Thursday, which is live, is Sting versus Rude in a lumberjack match. So that's all the news for TNA. Now on to SmackDown. Give me one. Yes, yeah, SmackDown. First, mat first match that caught my eye was Christian versus Honcho. It was a great match, and Christian's really trying to put over his his flux splash, which I, I'm i kind of 50-50 on it. I'd rather him come back. I don't know, cause probably maybe because I'm a fan of of submission fans, wrestlers that end their moves in submissions. Because I noticed he stopped doing the spear, and now he's trying to put over the flux splash. I'd rather just him come back with his own submission, to be honest. Uh, Christian beats Honcho. Then there is Darren Young versus Darren Young and Titus O'Neil versus the Uso brothers, which Darren Young wins. So I guess that the Uso brothers go back to jobbing. On a side note, did anybody ever notice that the uh, the T the not TNA the uh, WWE tag division is filled with a bunch of minorities? Yeah, stop and think. It's a, a t the t the tag division is a bunch of minorities. You have dudes in Paris, which are Kofi Kingston and R-Truth as tag champs, Darren Young and Titus O'Neil, the Uso brothers, and the, the, the Colognes, all minorities. Just wanted to throw that out there. This is the first time in history that I've ever seen a handicap match squash match. It was Ryback versus Chase Owens and Ricky Reyes, and Ryback just raped both of them. Uh, Pretty much, it was reverse double penetration. I'd, as the first time I've seen that on national television, and I thought SmackDown was a PG show. But hey, very, very entertaining match. Then it was Santino Morella versus Ricardo Rodriguez. Obviously, Santino Morella Santino won. Then it was Jack Swagger versus Sheamus, which was, the, in my opinion, the, the best match of the night. Very, very entertaining. But Sheamus wound up winning. Then it was uh, Damon Shadow actually had his first match against Yoshi Tatsu, and Damon Shadow destroyed Yoshi Tatsu. He destroyed him the week before, but he destroyed him clean wise in a match this week. Then it was a number one contender match, triple threat match was Alberto Del Rio, Randy Orton versus Kane, which Alberto Del Rio wound up winning. But before the match started, Daniel Bryan sprinted to the ring with a chair and started beating the holy hell out of Kane. And it was just chair shots, because every time he hit Kane with a chair, the fans chanted, yes, 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 
Yes, he he at least hit him with the chair at least a, over 12 times. And I guess this is a weird way of turning Kane face because we all know damn Brian's a heel. And it was just all out entertaining with the yes chair shots. But that sums it up for what happened on SmackDown and that sums it up for this week's news. Now to go to the to the un to the undrama scripted news. Chris Jericho will be serving a 30 day suspension due to his irresponsible act of the negligence of the Brazilian fag over at a house over in Brazil. Which he just took the flag and he just stomped all over it. And it's a different country, different rules. Brazil didn't appreciate that. So they had an outburst over it. So WWE and retaliation or to show some that some rules that they actually care that they suspended Chris Jericho for 30 days, which I don't understand why Brazil got so out of whack. I mean, come on, it's drama scripted action for crying out loud. Chris Jericho was just in character, but different country, different rules, so Chris Jericho suspended. Chris Jericho has a lot a lot to do on his plane anyway with his with his, with his band and his radio show. So I'll he'll look at it as, as free time off. I mean, it's gonna hurt what should have been the Randy Orton and uh, the Randy Orton and Chris Jericho feud that looked like it was about to happen. And Chris Jericho just got a new shirt, which he looks like he was killing all the wannabes that tried to be like him. So I don't know what they're going to go with this. They're probably going to somehow BS sneak Randy Orton into the Alberto Del Rio. The Alberto Del Rio and uh, Sheamus match, I'm assuming, because now Orton has nothing to do for apparently 30 days. But that's it on that side. And another another thing that's not drama scripted is TNA is trying to TNA has filed a lawsuit in Nashville against WWE. TNA uh, alleges that uh, a guy named Wentzman, who had worked for TNA previously, gave WWE inside information on contracts and matters with backstage with, with wrestlers within TNA. And it's and TNA is filing that it's it's unfair competition. I see this gonna get thrown out because if TNA is gonna sue WWE for unfair competition due to contra due to contact information, that means TNA will have to sue, sue every dirt dirt sheet website because now getting rumors that when um, Alex Shelley's contract, don't know if he wants to come to WWE for their new cruiserweight division that they're supposed to be making. And rumors that Ric Flair wants to get out of his contract, and basically TNA being upset that Ric Flair went to the Hall of Fame. This time, the third, I just, I just look at it as TNA being an outcry for for public attention, which it's probably just going to get thrown out of court. It doesn't make any sense. But yeah, that's it for all the the drama scripted news and the non drama scripted news. Uh, that's going to be it for this week's drama scripted Saturday. I'm Game Fever of all games, and the background should be. Roy the Chairman Prescott match 43, and if this is long, longer or long enough, maybe 44. Anyways, I'm Game Fee, Funeral Games Guy, signing out. Alright, later. Peace. Let the kill spree begin. Humans actually hope to survive much